standing in one of my urban plots and for the first time ever this plot is in cover crops. So today I want to talk to you guys about the importance of using cover crops also known as green manures. So there's a few reasons why you would use a cover crop. The first um, reason that a lot of people use them is it keeps your, your top soil in place. So once you go into fall in many North American climates or cold climates alike, no matter where you are in the world, you go into a rainy period. And what you see a lot of in, in conventional ag is farmers plowing up their fields in the fall, bare soil, rain comes, washes away the topsoil. So it's not really a good thing if you're an organic farmer because as organic farmers we need those biological processes to take place and losing topsoil is a horrible return on investment. <laughs> the soil, the, 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 the um, biology of the soil is absolutely critical to farming organically. So we want to keep that soil in place. For my, from the way I farm, if I wouldn't, if I'm, if I'm not able to get a cover crop or leave a previous crop in the ground, I'll tarp it going into the winter. So I try to not leave any bare, uh, bare soil exposed at any time in the winter. So the, the other reason that you would use cover crops is, well, there's two other reasons. One is to build organic matter back into the soil. And so that is done by mowing and turning these cover crops into the soil once they've finished. So that usually happens in the early spring. And the other is to build some, fixing some kind of nutrients into the soil. So in the case that I have here, it's going to be fixing nitrogen. So what I've planted on uh, this site is rye and peas as a mix. So I want to achieve both. I want to achieve organic matter and I want to achieve nitrogen. And that's going to take a while for that to happen. So basically what will happen here is this cover crop will grow all winter. It'll probably stop growing into the, you know, once it gets really cold. But as we go back into February, even early February in our climate, these things will start to grow again. So they're going to grow up, could be two or three feet, that's my hope. And then the peas as well. And then I will use a tool for my BCS tractor called a flail mower and I'll mow it down and that will also mulch it up on top of the soil. So at that point, I will either tarp it and let it decompose onto the soil or I will rototill it in. So I'm thinking for this plot, I'll rototill it in. This, this plot needs a lot of organic matter. When I first started farming this site, this soil was marginal at best. It was really poor soil. You know, it was clean, it wasn't contaminated, but it was effectively builder's rubble, which is a mix of sand, gravel, and a little bit of topsoil here and there. It's pretty bad soil. The nice thing about the way we farm though, and what allows us to get a site into production relatively quickly, is that we're not growing a lot of crops that require a lot of nutrients. So most of our crops are low feeders. So I can go in with a site, you know, get the minimal amount that I need to get that soil in production, and then I can grow lettuce and radishes and spinach and the types of crops that you know us for. But this soil, um, it just really needs another boost of organic residue and I haven't been able to get the compost that I normally have. The, uh, the, f the fellow who makes my compost unfortunately died this uh, just a couple weeks ago. Dean Dack, rest in peace. Uh, you and your compost will be missed. But um, so we need to move forward in building fertility and so using the cover crops is going to be our new strategy going forward. So another thing that some farmers do with cover crops is you can actually use, you can actually plant them mid-season. You don't have to do them in the winter. And uh, I've seen farmers do this many times where they'll kind of, they'll take out one rotation of a crop. So let's say, you know, for, for our farm, I'm always targeting four crops in my high rotation areas. So if each bed will have four different crops in it in a season. You could sub out one of those crops to do a, a mid-season green manure crop. So you might plant, same thing, fall, uh, rye and peas. But in the summer or the spring, those are gonna grow a lot quicker. So you might be able to grow that crop up to two feet off the ground in a month's time, depending on the season, and then mow it down and turn it in let that bed rest for maybe another month while it decomposes and then plant it again. So 
there are ways to do this and I'm constantly trying to find new ways and better ways to build soil, especially if I don't have somebody who can make me compost, at least enough that, uh, that, that I need on my farm. I, of course, make my own, but we just don't have enough um, resources to be able to make all the compost that we need on the farm, so we're left to buy it here and there. So this is the basic idea with cover crops, is I want to keep my soil intact, I want to put organic matter back into the soil, and I want to build some kind of nutrients in the soil. So in this case it's nitrogen, and I get that from my peas. The, the rye doesn't fix anything into the soil, it's more just there for organic matter. So I've got another bed that I'll just splice in right here. This is the one that I planted. It was probably two weeks ahead of this one. And this bed, you can see the peas and rye are doing really well. And uh, we're doing this anywhere where there is exposed soil, where a crop has been fully pulled out of the soil. So there's two other things you can do to have the effect, the somewhat effect of a cover crop. One is to leave any beds of greens or previous crop residue, leave them in the soil and just let them decompose. So in this case here, at our main site, we've got this bed of arugula. So it's been cut multiple times and it's not really gonna grow much anymore, but there's no point in turning it under. We might as well leave it on the soil. So that can have the same effect as rye. So it's not gonna be fixing nitrogen in the soil, but it's at least going to hold the topsoil in place during the heavy rains and in the spring it will give me some organic matter that I can turn back into the soil. The other thing you can do is you can when you're cropping out something like say it's a, a root crop that you're tearing the greens off so for us we tear the greens off our turnips, our radishes, our carrots you can throw them on the soil and so I've got a, here's, here's a shot of Jean Martin's farm where they've done that, where they've just cropped out a bunch of turnips and they just left the greens just rough as that on the soil, leaving that to just have a somewhat of a layer to protect the soil. Another thing you can do is using tarps, like I mentioned before. If you've got an area where you've cropped out a, a, um, a crop entirely, just lay a tarp down and then uh, you know, you're good to go there. So that's basically how we're using cover crops here. I understand that there's other farmers out there that have different techniques, but this is how we do it. And I've had a break from cover crops, so this is the first time I've done them in a long time. So hope you guys have found that helpful. If you want to see more stuff like that, please hit the subscribe button right now. Please like and share these videos with your friends. And check out my website at theurbanfarmer.co where you've got links to my book, my one day course, my online course and some free stuff on there and you can also make a donation to the show which it's much appreciated and always welcome that's the urbanfarmer.co support all right we'll see you soon